Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. Longtime viewers of the channel know by now that I'm absolutely obsessed with getting the Tesla Cybertruck. I'm really starting to think that the potential for the Cybertruck in the backcountry is a lot more than most people think, and I thought we could explore what's possible together. I've already done a video exploring how you can fully charge the Cybertruck anywhere in the world using portable renewable energy, and in today's video, let's explore having high speed, low latency internet anywhere in the world with SpaceX's Starlink. We'll go over the feasibility, the specs, the benefits, and bust a few myths. Overlanding, backcountry camping, and general wilderness use of the Cybertruck will be one of its biggest use cases. It's one of the first electric trucks meant for this sort of use. Now, in extremely rural areas, we know that internet connectivity is at best spotty. You're either stuck with fluctuating cell coverage in areas where you're somewhat near a cell phone tower, or the limited capabilities of a satellite phone. And it's in these sort of backcountry rural areas that Starlink is primarily meant to serve. Imagine being able to stream 4K video, run a live stream, or generally just maintain a strong internet connection for safety reasons while up at the top of some remote mountain, deep in the desert, or far north in the Canadian Arctic. Now I know what you're thinking. Big, bulky satellite dish mounted jankily to the top of your truck. But thankfully, the Starlink dish isn't as big as you might think. It's only 19 inches in diameter, or roughly half a meter wide. As SpaceX puts it, about the size of a medium pizza. And it's not that heavy either, it only weighs in at just shy of 12 pounds. And because of that, it's not too obscene to have to take it down and store it in the truck cab or your truck bed when you need to drive around and not have to worry about it slamming your range, or have it in areas where theft or vandalism is a concern. I mean, you can't really use it while the truck is in motion anyways, as it needs to have a stable position to lock on to the Starlink satellites in orbit. And setting up your Cybertruck for Starlink wouldn't be too much of a hassle either, it only needs it's two things to function, a stable mount and power. A simple quick release mount that you can pop onto the top of your truck shouldn't be too much of an issue. And as for power, it's already been confirmed that you'll have outlets in the bed of the truck. And the truck is essentially one big battery bank, so there's no intermediate power generation step. You just pull straight from the truck's battery. And the Starlink dish only uses 100 watts while running, assuming the worst case scenario where the Cybertruck only has a 100 kilowatt hour battery, you'd still be able to run your Starlink dish for up to 1,000 hours on a full Cybertruck battery, well over a month. And if you're still worried about it draining power, a single 120 watt solar panel should be enough to counteract its power draw during the day. Getting the thing to work is pretty straightforward too. The literally only two instructions it comes with in no specific order are number one, point to the sky, and number two, turn on. It'll automatically adjust itself to lock on to the satellites in low Earth orbit, although I should point out that it does need a clear line of sight to the sky, that is, no trees or anything blocking it. As for the specs, you might be thinking they're pretty terrible based on existing satellite specs, but try this on for size. 20 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds response time currently, with a target of 10 milliseconds, and 50 megabits to 150 megabits download speeds, all while being out in the most remote wilderness destinations. There's the obvious entertainment uses like online multiplayer and streaming movies, or even you, yourself, live streaming for content, hint hint on stuff I want to do in the future. And it can also turn your truck into a Wi-Fi hub around camp. Connect all your devices to have fast internet access in and around camp, your cabin, your underground bunker, whatever floats your boat. And then there's also the safety aspect. Stay in contact with friends and family or your convoy on an overlanding expedition if you got separated from the herd. Have access to GPS map data wherever you go. Be able to call for help at all times. Stay informed of any emergencies happening in the area or any risks or dangers to you, such as wildfires or washed out roads. The list goes on. Are you starting to catch on to its potential yet? And hey, if your particular use of the Cybertruck doesn't have a good use case for the Starlink, maybe you won't ever be outside of LTE coverage, or you're looking to intentionally be disconnected from the world around you, or the price is too high, just don't get the Starlink package. That's the beauty of add-on packages, don't get it if it doesn't work for you. I mean, it won't be for everybody. As for me, if it's an option and the monthly cost drops, you bet your arse I'll be getting one. It does have one particular downside at the moment, and that's that the user's terminal is geolocked to a specific area when they get it, their dish won't work outside of that zone. I highly suspect this won't always be the case though, and is likely tied to the fact that there's only a limited amount of Starlink satellites up in orbit, so service has to be carefully planned. As Muskyboy eats more Starlinks into orbit, I see no reason why this limitation won't be removed. 
The more Cybertruck videos I do, the more I realize how much of a powerhouse of a platform this truck is going to be. From attempting to charge it with a campfire using thermoelectric power, to pushing the full self-driving capability to its absolute limits in the backcountry, to live streaming for you guys out on backcountry trips, we're going to get up to some wacky shit on this channel with my Cybertruck. If you're new here, I take a look at how fun, futuristic technology can intersect with traditional outdoors experiences. Check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. If you're interested in the Cybertruck, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next time.